Hey gang, Chris Maholka here. Me and Blue are working on a project today. I look at a lot of websites and a lot of YouTube channels where people are making projects using epoxies and I hear a lot of questions back from people asking which types of epoxies are best for which situations. So I'm going to start out this little series on epoxies with 5 minute epoxy. I'm going to compare these different brands and show you what some of the features are with them as far as how fast they set, how well they uh, release bubbles, and also how clear they are once they're set. Here are the different products I'm going to test. One is JB Weld. This is their clear. It says down here clear and it's their five minute formula. I'm going to compare that with DevCon's five minute epoxy also says it's clear and all these I'm testing are clear because I want them to uh, show either lures or fly parts through them. I'm not going to use a colored epoxy. The third one, slightly different container, you can get these in the syringes also, but this is Flex Coats 5 minute uh, epoxy. This is a rod builder's glue, but also a good 5 minute epoxy. And the fourth one I'm going to test is just slightly different in that it is DevCon's two ton clear epoxy. This says it has a set light set time of seven minutes on it. So in effect it's a fast setting epoxy and it's close enough. I'm going to test it in this group. This is the testing procedure I've come up with. I'm going to use it for the five minute epoxies but I also plan on doing one on medium and slow setting epoxies as well. So I'm going to keep my testing procedure the same. So we'll have at the end of the next couple of videos a good uh, overall view of what different epoxies can do for you. What I'm going to do is I'm going to mix everything on flat plastic. I'm going to mix it with a the back of a brush so I've got a flat plastic uh, mixing tool so I don't introduce bubbles having a textured like wooden surface. After I mix them I'm going to take, these are 35 millimeter film container caps. I'm going to set one on the plastic. I'm going to fill that up to the lip with epoxy and let that cure. Then I'm also going to take a rubber band. These are these little green. You used to uh, use them or use them for uh, crocheting with rubber bands. I'm going to put that just flat and use that as a slight retainer and I'm going to put epoxy in the center of that. So when these cure I'll be able to pick this one up and have a defined area of uniform thickness that will show me clarity. With the cap here I'll be able to pop the epoxy out of it and have just a disc of epoxy that will also show me a thicker clarity plus bubbles. So this is the process I'm going to use through all of these epoxy tests. So let's get started now with one of the five minute versions. This first one will be the JB Weld five minute and I've got a piece of plastic bag that I have marked with the JB 5 minutes. I'll remember which epoxy it is. Then I've got T for thick, G for gel, and H for hard because these go through some stages of just getting thicker as they cure, going to almost like a thick jelly state, and then total hardness. So I'm going to keep track of the times on these and record those as well. So that's just going to sit out here in front. I'm going to put my plastic cap I'm going to fill. and I'm going to do two rubber bands just to make sure I get one of them full of epoxy without it running out under the edges and that will be to put my test in after I mix it. So I'm ready to mix and I'm going to just take the cap off the JB Weld and try to get even amounts out and it's easier with these syringes than it is using bottles. When you're done with the syringes if you pull back on the handle it pulls a little air up into it, it keeps it from dripping and and uh, getting your uh, tip of your syringes all gooey or hardening up. So now that I've got my epoxy out, I'm just going to start. And if you watch my video on mixing without bubbles, you know how to go about mixing this and keeping as few bubbles out of it as possible. Now my temperature in my room and my epoxy is 70 degrees. I've had it stabilized for several days for this test. So I know that my epoxy is room temperature and is just about perfect working temperature. I'm just swirling the epoxy until I get the streakiness out of it. 
and you're seeing white streaks it means it's not blended now I'll just go from one side to the other and rake it back and forth get all of it that's not mixed off the plastic up into the mix and continuing on the back of some of the containers it tells you exactly how long to mix these 30 seconds to a minute is a good average but if you're working with a real short working span five minute epoxy you don't want to mix too long or you won't ever get it on your project so my streaks are all gone I'm ready to move into my little test container so I'm going to take and just scoop it up with the back of the or with my mixing stick and I'm just going to let it drip into this I'm going to fill it just up to the lip that way I know over the course of the testing I'll get consistent results everything will be relatively the same depth or same thickness when I'm looking at clarity of the epoxies one thing I'm not doing on these is I'm not using any heat or anything to knock the bubbles out because I want to see how well it's going to as it warms up release its own bubbles so that's full Let's scrape up a little bit more off I could have mixed a little bit more honestly to do this test with and we're just going to drip it into the center of the rubber band area and it'll settle right up to the top of the rubber band kind of create its own little dome shape I may not do two of them because I may not have enough epoxy mix to do two of the rubber bands starting to thicken up already and I've got my timer set you can see bubbles coming to the surface in the container here also see it a little bit in the rubber band and now we're just gonna watch the clock and record the times that it takes for these to set up So now watching the clock, we are at six minutes and we are in the gummy stage. It's really more than just thick. It's actually holding its own shape and getting almost like a gel uh, gelatin consistency. So we will mark the six minutes as its gel or gooey stage. We're now to what I would consider the hard stage. It's still kind of soft and pliable, but it's really hardened up. And we're at nine minutes. So we're going to call that good at nine minutes for the JB Weld five minute. Now that my glue is sufficiently set up, and it's still slightly tacky, but definitely hard, I've recorded my times down here on how long it took it to thicken, gel, and harden. I'm just going to take the little top plastic cap and I'm going to pop out this disc. Still a little bit soft. You can bend it. But now I have a clear disc to work with. I'm also going to take this little guy and just get the rubber band loose on one side. Just pull the rubber band off. Now I have a smaller, thinner disc that I can also use to compare my uh, clarity with and also my bubbles now I've done this with the five minute JB weld I'm gonna do it with some of my other five minute epoxies and then I'll be back with results of how they all look so here are my test results of the four five minute epoxies you saw me mix the JB weld five minute what I came up with on these I'm gonna First off, I'm going to slide a little bit of white paper under these so we can see the clarity when I talk about it a little bit better. I'm going to talk about times first. The JB Weld. JB Weld. To get thick, it took four minutes. To get to the really gummy stage, took six minutes. And to the hard stage, nine minutes. That was easy to work with, had plenty of time to get it in the little test molds and everything. 
Next, we're going to look at the time on the DevCon 5-Minute Epoxy. This one was a little odd in that when I mixed it, it set very quickly. The thick stage at 4 minutes, the gooey stage at 5, and the hard at 6. That got hard enough so fast that my test sample didn't even hardly settle down, flatten into the into the film cap. It's, it actually held little peaks that was setting up so fast. Next is the DevCon 2 ton, which is rated as a slower epoxy, and it slightly was. Thick at 7 minutes, it gelled at 8 minutes, and it got hard at 16 minutes. So it had quite a bit longer time out there for it to actually get hard enough I could work with it get it out of the mold. And last is the flex coat. This got thick in five minutes, gelled in seven, and again a little bit longer it was hard in ten minutes. So really in the five minute epoxy class, 70 degrees, they didn't really do five minutes other than the DevCon five minutes was pretty quick, but they uh, they were all pretty much in the close range. Now we're going to talk about transparency and bubble retention. This is the one you watched me mix, the uh, JB Weld 5 minutes. You can see very clear looking against the white background. Even on edge, when you're looking at it quite uh, through quite a bit of the resin, it's not bad. It's still pretty clear. Compare this. This is the DevCon 5 minute. It's got a fair amount of green tint to it. And when you look at it on edge, you can really see the green in it. Okay, so right now we're holding the JB Weld as the, the best uh, contender as far as clarity goes. Next is the DevCon 2 ton, which it held a few more bubbles and it has a little bit more color to it but it's not bad it's it's very very clear and clean looking and the final contender in the group is the flex coat five minute and again when I did these I didn't do any bubble melting out of them the flex coat did hold a few more bubbles down in the mix without releasing them but it is very clear very good color to it and those are both pretty much equal in color even when looking through a large cross section of them. So the JB Weld 5 appears to come out as well as the Flex Coat on Clarity and as far as the DevCon 2 ton on Clarity the DevCon 5 minute is definitely more green. Now if you take this down to smaller pieces like the little rubber band samples I did if you're doing a very small amount on a fly or a lure or something. That is the JB Weld 5 Minute. Very clear. The surprising thing was the DevCon still showed up having quite a bit of green in it. The DevCon 5 Minute. The DevCon 210 or 210, I'm sorry, uh, is not bad at all. It would work very well in thin amounts on just about any project. And the flex coat again has a few more bubbles in it, but I have that a mark on it so you can I can keep track of which is which. Uh, the flex coat is very nice and clear, and the flex coat has kind of a, like a shinier appearance to the surface, but both will suffice. So after this testing, there's really nothing scientific saying what you should use, but I do a lot of different types of crafts from fly tying and lure making and rod building. And let me give you my opinion on what I would use these particular epoxies for if I needed something that was a really short time five minute one. DevCon, because of the very short cure time and the amount of color in it, I would not use this on something like a lure or a rod where you had a light colored thread. You may pick up a color tint from the epoxy and you'd only want to use it on something you had a 
a very short period of time you wanted to work on it. You couldn't mix this up and do 10 lures. If you could get one done, you'd be lucky. The JB Weld and the DevCon uh, both performed very well. Their clarity is good. They cured fairly quickly, although the DevCon 2 ton was a little bit slower in 7 minutes on the thickening stage compared to the JB Weld's 4 minutes on the thickening stage. These could both be used on any kind of project that you were putting this on the surface. One thing I didn't say is if I was using this and I wanted to assemble a rod where I wanted to put a, a grip or something on very quickly and wanted it to set, the, the DevCon 5 minute would be excellent for that. It's cut down on work time on a project. The flex coat, very clear, uh, did have quite a few bubbles, which means that I would only use this on a project where I could uh, use a flame on it and hit it with a flame to knock bubbles out like a lure or a uh, rod, the, the wraps on rods. You'd want to use this in an application where you could uh, use a flame to knock out bubbles. So that's my basic opinion on 5-minute epoxies and the popular brands. Um, I'm going to move ahead to my next video and I'm going to show you some of the medium cure time epoxies and uh, that I found online and what those will do for you. Thanks for watching.